Hello. Do you know what this number means? 33, yes. <laughs> but probably not without any context. Uh, 33 is the number of roles, people, that you need to publish a book. So, for example, Harry Mullich wrote The Discovery of Heaven alone in his living room office. But in the end, he needed 33 people, and probably more for his book, to publish it. The same for a song, Justin Bieber. He can write a song alone, at home, in his living room, bedroom. But he get it on Spotify, he needs to have a team. He needs to have people who help him to publish the song. The world nowadays is getting more complex and complicated. Information is flowing faster around the globe. Globalization is increasing. And the problems that we face nowadays are getting more complex and complicated. You can't solve them alone anymore. And I believe that the solution is working with teams, having teams to solve those problems. I want to share two projects with you. I work in the software industry for more than 20 years. Two projects that both had the same assignment. Rebuild the product using new technologies to make sure that it can again be uh, future proof. So project number one, running already for two years, millions of euros invested, and the day was there, a Thursday afternoon. The board was visiting the software development department to look at the results. And the team was able to show 5%, 5% of the total project that needed to be done. As you can imagine, the board was furious. I mean, how could this happen? After two years, millions of euros invested, only 5%. Here the discussions that afternoon. And in the end, at the end of the meeting, at the end of the day, when the board left, they had just one final message. We don't care how, but you're going to fix it. That's what they said. So they minimized management, maximized trust in the team. So project number two. Same project again, rebuild the product using new technologies. Again, running for a few years, and it was important for the company. So the CTO was involved weekly, attending meetings, helping the team to make decisions. And again, this project did not progress as expected. So what they did in the end, or one moment, was telling the team, we're going to disconnect you from the department. We're going to put you in a separate part of the building, a separate floor, no connection to the other teams, you can work six months undisturbed. That will help it. That will, then we make the progress. So after six months, when they came back, and they did not join any cake parties, any coffee, nothing, they were totally alone. But after six months, when they came back, the progress was again disappointing. So the CTO got even more involved, daily. At one moment, the team member said, let's start over again, let's do it in a different way. This backfired on his performance review that year. So the team told me that we don't have trust in this project anymore. We don't believe that the CTO is trusting us. So guess which project was successful? The first one. Where the board said, we don't care how you're going to fix it, but fix it. So minimize management, maximize trust in the team. I love the hike. I've been to Germany two weeks ago in the Eiffel. The weather was so-so, a bit like the Dutch weather. Just one day rain, so it was good. But it was great. And this is Scotland, this is not the Eiffel. Um, but still, I love the hike. Being outdoor in nature, enjoying nature, uh, being one with nature. And there's so many things that we can learn from nature. So many good things. And one evening when I was trying to catch some sleep in my tent and the wind was trying to blow it away again, I also realized that when you look at teams, we can also learn a lot from nature. Teams are living organisms. Teams are not machines. They don't produce the same value every time, every day. You cannot replace one team member by another team member and then having the same results. It doesn't work like that. Teams adapt to their environment. They react to stimuli. They're trying to find stable balance. And sometimes teams can even reproduce, depending on the team members. But teams are living organisms. And if so, then why not look at nature? Because nature is already doing, dealing with living organisms for millions of years. 
So probably we can learn again from nature. And I think we can learn four things from nature when we talk about teams. And the first one is about every living organism is part of a bigger system. Every living organism is connected to something else. Coastal seabirds are depending on the tides. Forest fires are terrible, but they clean up the debris, open the forest for sunlight, moisture the soil, and that gives opportunities to plants and animals. Some animals are depending on other animals for their survival. Zebras, great eyesight, but they lack smell. Ostriches, don't lack, they have lack smell, but they have great eyesight. And if they are together, they can smell and see predators coming. So the same with teams. Teams need to be aware of the budget for next year that is coming, for the next quarter. They need to be involved in that discussion. They need to get feedback. What can they do? What can they spend? Some teams are really depending on other teams because they need to have knowledge that they don't have themselves, experiences, tools. So teams really need each other. The second one is about purpose. Every living organism has a clear purpose. Survive to reproduce. It's simple as that. Survive to reproduce. Nothing more, nothing less. And everything that they do contributes to this purpose just to survive and reproduce. And that makes life easy for them. Teams struggle often with purpose. For example, Greenpeace. The purpose of Greenpeace is to the ability to support the ability of Earth to nurture life in all this diversity. I mean, think about it. It sounds cool, it sounds great, but what if you work in a finance department meeting Greenpeace? How do you connect your daily work with Excel SAP to this purpose. So I believe that we need to support teams in discovering their purpose. What is the purpose of this team? And how does this purpose contribute to the bigger purpose? Again, also, how does it fit in the bigger system? The third one is about conflicts. Living organisms have regular conflicts about food, water, survival, territory, social status in the group, things like that, is part of their life. Even plants have conflicts to increase the chance of reproduction. But teams struggle with that. People don't like conflicts. Teams don't like conflicts. Most teams try to avoid them, be friends with everyone. But that doesn't, doesn't work. They need to have conflicts to discuss what is the best approach to this task. What is the best approach to realize the purpose that we have as a team? How can we get close to that purpose? And teams need to understand that when in conflicts occur, innovation happens. And we need to support those teams in having conflicts. The last learning is about trust. We are destroying nature. With our current way of living, we are destroying nature. It's sad, but it's true. April 26, 1986, Chernobyl disaster, a nuclear explosion. Nuclear everywhere are in Chernobyl. More than 30 years later, if you look at that area, wildlife is flourishing, it's growing. I mean, there are wolves, uh, a lot of animals, preys. It's flourishing. And who would ever expect that 30 years ago? And this happens everywhere where humans step back. Plants and animals recover, they reclaim the territory. It's the same with teams. We need to give them trust. Don't step in too fast. Be patient. You can't force it. But as with living organisms, as with nature, it will be okay. Don't push it. This happens all naturally in nature. Living organisms are part of nature for millions of years. It goes every day like that. But for teams it's different. We need to support teams. And it's like this beautiful garden, the Keukenhof. You need to do work for this. You need to put the seeds in the ground. 
You need to water the plants, protect them from the wind, from the cold, remove weeds. Depending on the garden, you also need to cut branches. It's hard work. But it's hard work to keep this garden, to grow this garden, and to enjoy this garden. You are the gardener of your team. You need to support your team. You need to make sure that your team connects to the environment. You need to make sure that the team is safe to have conflicts. Help the team discover their purpose. And above all, have trust. And like this garden, you cannot force it to grow. You cannot force your team to do stuff. You need to be patient. Because in the end, you are the gardener of your team. Thank you.